Welcome back to the video. Before we get started on Workhorse, definitely check out some links in the description below. One of them is a free Discord server. We're about to hit 14,000 members. There's also a second channel link below and also a pretty awesome Weeble sign up link. Click on it, make a Weeble broker account, deposit $100 and get two free stocks. So Workhorse, let's get on to it because this is an electric van company. They make these last mile logistics vehicles. Keep in mind, they have a factory. They're trying to crank out about 100 vehicles per month at the end of quarter four. They have the Japanese company Hitachi to manage sales and upscale production, which is pretty a pretty big hint, just to keep that in mind, about how they are you know, trying to handle upcoming pre-orders. And they have the C650, which is an ideal smaller vehicle, and the C1000, which is an ideal package delivery car. And these are the last mile logistic vans. Like you see FedEx and UPS outside your neighborhood. You're not gonna be seeing a giant Tesla Semi outside your neighborhood delivering vehicles. The US Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, for example, all use these smaller vehicles to deliver mail and packages to homes. That's what these are. But keep in mind, only Workhorse is the company that makes electric vans. No one else. I mean, sure, you got Rivian, but they don't have a factory, and that's about it. So, so far, if you check this out, Workhorse is being added to the Russell 3000 Index. It really helps. They also have a $70 million institutional funding, and the real catalyst that everyone's talking about is USPS. This is by far the juiciest of all, and this is $6 billion, which is literally like twice the size of their market cap right now of $3.22 billion. It's pretty insane. So, so far, if you check this out, the Postal Service is now trying to replace all those gasoline vehicles. We saw like those USPS vehicles are really small, they're kind of cranky, and they're very old, and they need a big renovation, and they need about 140,000 vans. And that's worth up to $6 billion. That is a lot of money. And so far, Workhorse, if you look at several months ago, they have about five companies that got chosen for the USPS contract. Workhorse was one of them. And you clearly see the CFO they talk about the USPS contract says the company has a two-year lead ahead on competitors because they make the electric version. If you charge these vans to max, you get 100 miles. That's actually pretty good. It's more than enough to deliver packages to your no local neighborhoods. No one else among the four other companies are using electric for the vans. It's either hybrids or mostly gasoline. Around this time, it was like you know early August, there are only about four competitors left and then three competitors left. And the final three companies being chosen by the Postal Service is going to be these guys right here. One of them is, I'm not even going to pronounce that. I think it's like Carson Morgan Olsen. It's kind of like a weird little looking truck. It's a hybrid truck. It still runs on gasoline, but when you press the brakes on it, it recharges your battery. That's how hybrids work. There's also one by four. This one is purely gasoline and then workhorse ta-da we got the fully electric ev right here trying to make vehicles for u.s postal service you clearly see workhorse they also own 10 percent of lordstown motors which they have a factory trying to crank out these really insane vehicles but that's a whole different you know story so the thing is if you're usps okay would you guys buy a gasoline hybrid most likely not. I mean, it does sound pretty appealing. I guess it's really fast to just fill up with gas. Would you guys buy a fully like gasoline version? Most likely not, but then again, they may be kind of obligated to strike a deal with Ford because it does create a lot of jobs, etc. But then again, most likely not Ford because it's fully gasoline. Workhorse, it's a US company as well, and it's pretty incredible. And so far, I feel like this is the best choice because it's fully electric. It's very low maintenance. And when the USPS is shelling out $6 billion for their aging fleet, you saw how old those cars are. When they get something, they're going to be using it for the next possible decade. Like, they're not going to be changing things up that much. Pretty much, Workhorse could be chosen because it's fully electric. And with fully electric, less maintenance. All you need to do is charge it up. No gasoline. It's super simple. Also, it's really good for the environment. Imagine Workhorse getting this full deal. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of people out there saying how Workhorse may only be getting $2 billion of the contract and the rest will be for the other companies out there. So far, there's also talks about how the US Postal Service may be, instead of getting one company $6 billion, maybe a number of companies some money here and there. They're not gonna be choosing one company, but in my opinion, 
Who knows, Workhorse may be getting the full $6 billion deal. You have a lot of hedge funds and companies out there like Oprah Hemier that is saying Workhorse is the prime candidate for it. You even got the CFO coming out and saying that it has a huge lead on competitors. If I'm USPS, I would definitely be getting the electric version of these vans because why would I be getting the gasoline versions when there's a perfectly fine fully EV version with extremely low maintenance, I don't have to use any gasoline, no additional training, and it's super easy to use. I love it. This is really, really good. And so far, Workhorse knows that. And keep in mind, Workhorse, even with a $6 billion deal, they already have like a lot of other orders here and there. They got like a UPS order of 950 trucks two years ago. They have a deal with Ryder. They may actually get a deal here and there, but keep in mind, make no mistake, they are the only EV van companies out there currently in the market. No one else. I mean, sure, you got like maybe other small companies here and there making prototypes. They're the prototypes. Workhorse got the US certification for safety. They have a factory. Now, the main thing about this is they kind of have, they're, they're kind of like the only company that make these. A bunch of companies right now are making semi trucks. Tesla making the electric semi, Hylion making the natural gas semi and the convertible hybrid semi, and then you got Nikola making the hydrogen semi. Sure, semi trucks are really cool, but that's only one step of the logistics product. And with so much stuff from e-commerce, so much packages, these EV trucks will be the next big thing. I wouldn't even be surprised if UPS and FedEx orders a ton of trucks from Workhorse. Workhorse is a phenomenal company with little to no flaws, but the biggest thing about it is they don't have any major orders. So having the US Postal Service ordering Workhorse is a major thing for them because it's a snowball effect. When you have, when you present to other companies saying, hey, we're actually making a bunch of trucks for USPS, like a $6 billion deal. That's credibility right there. So a lot of other companies like the smaller logistics companies in Louisville, Cincinnati, and other cities will order these electric trucks from Workhorse. And keep in mind, these trucks are honestly pretty nice. If you check out some of the, you know, the pictures, they're actually pretty big. And so far, you clearly see you can fill a lot of stuff. This looks exactly like one of those FedEx UPS trucks that drives from our neighborhood to you know, unload packages. And it's fully electric. The appeal out there is huge. You can clearly see there's a lot of storage space. It's good. I'm kind of surprised how a truck this big runs purely on electricity. But so far, the overall company, even without the order, it's just extremely small. It's a $3.22 billion company. It's very, very tiny compared to other guys out there like Nikola Motors, which is like $12 billion. It's very small compared to Tesla, which is $400 billion. And so far, the stock is mooning. And guess what? You have a lot of people talking about it. People seem to love it, and it's a really, really good company. Kathy Wood also owns 600,000 shares for her RQ ETF. Just to keep that in mind, I feel like they're the biggest contesters. They already survived two rounds of eliminated nations. They started off five companies. Now it's three companies. Workhorse is one of the three companies being chosen. I feel like Workhorse might get the deal because they're the only option that's fully electric. The rest of them are gasoline or hybrids, which don't seem as appealing. I highly doubt. I really don't think that USPS will be going for a fully gasoline version. They might actually buy a few EVs and then a few hybrids. That's most likely what's going to happen. That's about it. Thanks for watching and comment below.